Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at assembling the K9JEB power pole distribution block. By the time you see this video, I'll have already assembled one of these on Kyle's channel. We're going to do that live on a build night. I actually bought two of these kits. Now what I thought I'd do is take my second kit and build it up before the build night on Kyle's channel, mostly for practice, but also to sort of document this and release sort of a, an abridged version. So here's a look at what the kit comes with. There's enough power pole shrouds and contacts here to build up six full connectors to mount on this little printed circuit board here. There's also a couple of filter capacitors, a fuse, and fuse holder terminals, some bare copper wire, I think this is 14 gauge, and then an LED and a resistor. So in addition to the electronics part of the kit, I also ordered one of the 3D upright bases that comes with the four screws to mount the board into the base. As you can see, I've got the printed circuit board mounted in my board holder. The first thing I'm gonna do is bring in these fuse holders and mount them into the board in these two locations. So I've got my soldering iron set to 650F or 340C as recommended by the instructions on the website. What I'm gonna do now is tack solder these in from the top side so that they don't fall out and then I can spin the board around and solder the connections from the back. I'm gonna leave the iron on here for a few seconds just to get some heat in here and now I should be able to tack this. Now I'm gonna flip this over and solder the leads from the back side. Since these contacts are made of nickel plated brass, I'm gonna put a little bit of flux on here to help the solder flow a little bit. So one thing to note is when soldering these contacts on, we don't wanna let solder kind of flow down and into the contact where the fuse plugs into, otherwise the fuse just won't seat in there properly. So I think these look okay. I'm gonna move on to the next step. So the next step calls for cutting 12 pieces of this copper wire, somewhere between 5 eighths and 3 quarters of an inch long. So I'm gonna do that now. So that piece of wire yielded about 13 cut pieces, each three quarters of an inch long. The next thing that I'm going to do is take each of the cut pieces and insert them into a power pole contact as far as it'll go, and then crimp the contact onto the wire. So the instructions call for crimping and soldering each of these power pole contacts. Probably not necessary to do both, but I don't think it would hurt. So I'm gonna solder each one of these now. To do that, I'm gonna leave the soldering iron cranked up to about 340C or 650F. And I'm gonna put a little flux on each contact here to help the solder flow. And we'll get them soldered. Now that I've got the contacts installed in the shrouds, I'm gonna put the red and black power poles together. I'm going to follow the rule outlined in the instructions that states that the red is on the right and the tongue or the plastic part of the shroud is facing up. So then I'm going to slip the groove that's in the black shroud over the shallow tongue that's on the right shroud and squeeze these together. So now to double check and make sure I've got these oriented correctly, I'm going to plug them into a known good set of power poles. And you can see I should be good to go. So now I'll do the same thing for the other five pairs and we'll be ready to solder. Next up, I'm gonna install this resistor. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I've got the leads bent over 90 degrees just off the body of the part. And I'm gonna install it into the plated through holes that are just below the inside fuse terminal. Now we'll bend the leads out a little bit so the part can't fall out of the board. Next up, I'm gonna install the LED into the plated through holes next to the outer fuse terminal. Next up, I'm going to install the LED so that the longer of the two leads goes through the plated through hole with the positive marking, which is towards the end of the board. Now, just like with the resistor, I'm going to bend the leads out slightly so the part can't fall out. Okay, now I'll trim the excess leads. So next up, I'm going to install the capacitors. 
I'm going to install this smaller one in the C1 location that's next to the fuse terminal. And then I'll install the larger capacitor in the C2 location that's over here at this end. You may be able to see that each one of these locations has a plus sign and that's the side that the red terminal will go into. So I'm going to orient these as such and solder them in. Okay, so it's also going to be necessary to add a little bit of flux here so that the solder will wet to the wire. So obviously the power pole will fall out if I let go of it. I've got some solder on the soldering iron and I'm just going to tack this in place so that it will stay and then I can solder it properly. Now that I've got these all tacked in so the connectors won't fall out, I'm going to go back and solder all of these leads properly and then go back and clean these up. So I've got everything all soldered up here. What I'm going to do now is cut all the excess length off of these wires. Now we'll clean up all the excess flux with some IPA. So now I've got the 3D printed base that I ordered with the kit. I'm going to put the assembly down in the base. And I'm going to take the supplied screws and screw the board down into the base. And the last thing to do is to install the fuse. So to test out the power strip, I've got a connection from my power supply that's over there off camera. So I'm going to plug my power supply into the terminal that's closest to the fuse here and perpendicular to the others. So now I'll plug in my Yezu FT891 and make sure we can power it up. And of course it doesn't matter which position I plug it into, radio should still work the same. And now just for fun, I'm going to pull the fuse out of here and we'll check and see if the blown fuse indicator is working. If there's no load through the power block and the fuse is either out or burned out, the LED will not illuminate. So I've still got my Yezu connected over here off camera. If I try and turn it on, and it tries to draw a load through the power bank, you should see that LED light up. So there it is. Looks like it's working as it should. So that's pretty much going to wrap things up for the K9JEB power pole distribution block. So I think this is a great kit, especially for somebody who hasn't done a lot of kit building in the past. There's not a ton of components on here to get mixed up, and they're not so small that you can't handle them. I think this is a great kit for practicing soldering too, especially having to deal with soldering these power poles on. You got to use a little bit more heat and learn how to kind of control that solder so it doesn't flow too much or too little. And if you do end up putting too much heat into this, it's a little bit forgiving. You're not going to ruin it like you might a kit with smaller components or more components. The other thing I like about this is it's relatively inexpensive. The commercially available power pole distribution blocks that are pre-made are usually a lot more expensive than what this kit was. So even if you just need a power pole distribution block, this may be something you want to take a look at. But I guess that's it for now. If you want to learn more about this kit, I'm going to leave a link down below to K9JEB's website. Now he's got more than just power pole distribution blocks on there. So take a look. There may be something there that interests you if this doesn't. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider taking a look at my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Seven, four, one,